So we're not going to Pentec. I'm a little, I'm upset about it, but I'm, I'm trying to keep it together like a grown-up. Uh, since we're not going this year, my husband and I have decided to sort of use the, the time and expenses saved to up our SEA game. We're going to go through all of our, all of our old crap and get rid of things that we don't like anymore, garb that doesn't fit anymore, garb we don't wear anymore. Um, we're going to get rid of things like, spoilers, these candlesticks because no candle I've tried to put in these has fit at all. Not my fake ones, not my real ones. Candles don't fit in these. And they were a gift and I feel a little guilty about it, but they're going to find a new home with somebody who has smaller candles, apparently. We're going to use this next calendar year to try and build like a better kitchen setup for our encampment stuff. We're going to basically just overhaul everything. And hopefully it's a pain-free process. And if I get rid of enough garb, that means I get to make new stuff. So that'll be fun. I kind of want to try my hand at Italian Renaissance, um, which will be completely new for me. And it's a little bit daunting, but I'm excited to try it. But yeah, here's me going through my mountain of crap. Wish me luck. All right, so there's this pesky uh, candlesticks. Also one of my LED candles right in the very front, just because, you know, we live for two weeks in a canvas tent and you don't want to set it on fire. Those are really expensive to replace. I've got a sheet of paper that I am keeping track of everything I keep and get rid of, mostly because I've been trying to write up sort of a comprehensive inventory that I can share with my friends who are new to the SEA, sort of just to kind of give them an idea of where to get started and what seems the most necessary to them. They'll have like a nice, almost a checklist, I guess you could say. God, that is a lot of junk. Okay, candle. It still works. You can't really see it because of the daylight, but oh well, it does. Another candle. I think most of these came from the dollar store, to be completely honest, usually around Christmas. Um, more LED candles. Cheapy little fake leather belt I'm setting it aside for the time being. This is our nice drinking horn. It's my husband's. A couple of straw hats. Cannot stress the importance of those enough. So I'm writing them down in the keep list. We've been playing in the SCA kind of on and off for about 11, 12 years. We took a big long break in the middle there. Um, the local group wasn't terribly active and had a tendency towards clickishness, so we wound up with a lot of old dusty stuff that didn't get used for almost a decade. Um, this drinking horn was given to us for free. It's made of plastic. Uh, I think it was like memorabilia from the show Vikings. Um, probably not going to keep that, but might pass it along to... Maybe one of my little brothers or somebody else who's just getting into things and doesn't care about what their their gear's made of so long as it looks good. I'm a little picky. I like I like my linens and my wools. Wooden spoons, I think I got them at an event. I think they came from Smoke and Fire Trading Company, I think they're called. Uh, the tankards are very beat up. They're like a goodwill find from years ago. This was an attempt at a cup cover because bugs and outdoor events are a real thing. I embroidered it, but I'm not I'm not great at embroidery and I'm not crazy about how it came out. This is my favorite cup. It's got like a hand forged handle on it and it's the one I usually hook to my belt, so definitely keeping that one. Uh, there they go on the list. I've been just kind of keeping my my inventory list uh, in a Google Doc that I shared with some of our friends. Uh, this is Penanular Brooch. I think I got that a couple years ago at Penzik. Got one for myself and got my brothers each one for Christmas presents because that's where I do my Christmas shopping. Plates, a couple of pewter ones. 
I cannot for the life of me remember where those came from. Maybe a antique store? These are dollar store cheapy, I don't know, tin plates. I don't really, we don't eat off of them. Um, they're mostly extra plates if people come over or serving platters. Sometimes they're, they're shiny, but they're not, they're not great material. So keeping them, but might change my mind about that later. This, I think I got at one of my first SCA events. It is just a cover for a modern notebook. I write basically constantly, so you can fit like basic composition notebook inside it. Um, I might have gotten this at my first Pensec, to be completely honest, because I think the notebook in there still has our original packing list, because I kind of did an inventory while we were camping. <laughs> actually got a couple of like notebook covers I think I pull one out later on to show the camera um, this is a heap of cloth napkins that someone left free for the taking in our apartment complex and I saw some potential in them they're not you know historically accurate but neither is paper towels so you know do what you can and I don't have to hem them, which is a major plus in my mind. Uh, cause I hate hemming. And they've got kind of just like delicate gold embroidery on them. And it's nice to have a couple of napkins for, for feasts or just, you know, to make your encampment look a little bit more homey, I guess. Um, also they help keep the drinking horn nice and cushioned because it's made of real horn. So... Uh, I think we got that off Etsy. Cannot remember the seller at the moment though, but it's a beautiful horn and it does, you know, it does the trick. It holds a lot of, a lot of uh, grown-up beverage, shall we say? And you can sort of see the embroidery pattern on the, on the cloth napkin there. It's just kind of viney and pretty. This is about the time when I realized I was not going to have enough room on the table to keep working if I didn't start packing some of these things. So that's where the horn went, back into the box. And onto the list. These napkins are softer, and so probably more likely to be the ones we use, but I'm not sure about that yet, because I just picked them up. Um, and again, they help cushion some of the packing, keep things safe. Because I got a couple breakable things in this box. We do all of our packing into plastic totes because if you've ever been to Pensick, you know it's probably going to rain. Um, we haven't had any problems with flooding the handful of times we've been able to make it. Uh, I don't know if that's just luck or if we manage to pick a high enough ground. It helps that we don't camp down in the bog. It's warm, but we camp up on the high ground and you want to make it to those early morning classes anyway, so if you get cooked out of your tent, you get cooked out of your tent. This knife, uh, my husband made for me. I usually wear it on my belt. It's a little top-heavy, though, so sometimes it gets tucked into a bag instead. And those are going away into the box and onto the list. This is a whole big tangle, and it's usually what I'm wearing around my waist. Uh, this green and black pouch here I got at my very first SCA event ever um, and the guy is still out there making pouches I ran into him this past February at an event he was you know vending and I saw what looked like the big brother of my pouch and stopped to look closer and he saw the the pouch on my belt and was like is that one of mine and I'm like probably it looks like it and we got to talking and basically he doesn't make it in the size that I have anymore because they were too small for people. I like it. it. My hands are small, so I can, I can fit my hand in there. No problem. Which was, he said one of the, uh, complaints people had, but it's the perfect size for a cell phone. Even how giant cell phones have gotten like to put this into perspective. When I bought it, I was using a Motorola razor flip phone and my, my current phone fits still, so uh, it's it's not giant, but it's also not tiny. So, and and this is one of the uh, other notebook covers that I was talking about. It's just for like a little flip 
flip pad. Um, I didn't do a very good job. I measured wrong. I'm probably going to remake it, but it was an experiment, so I'm pleased for, for now. <laughs> and it can be tied onto my belt, and a pen can be tucked inside with it, and it's just made out of, like, some heavy material that I've made a couple of, like, oh, I've made decorative sleeves out of, I've made uh, a coif out of it, like, just pretty brocade-type fabric, um, definitely not historical. And the belt is my usual belt that I wear because it's big and sturdy, and, you know, it's not period, but it's it's basic and doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, and so that's kind of what I'm looking for in a belt. I have a couple of, like, pretty placket belts as well, which are more historically correct, but that you can't hang anything off of them. They're delicate and emphasis on pretty, not functional. Uh, and I've got some junk in this little pouch, which my husband made for me. He's been trying to get into leather working. He likes the construction part of it, but not the embellishment part of it. And I like the embellishment part, not the construction, so our powers combined, maybe we could make some pretty pieces. And then let's see what some of this junk was. I've got uh, reproduction playing cards. I think also from Smoke and Fire. Um, when we first started getting into the SCA, my neighbors growing up had done French fur trade reenactment, which is really more what Smoke and Fire covers time period wise. Uh, so if you are doing any sort of like 18th century type stuff, they've got a lot going for you. Um, this is Nine Man Morris, but it's a cheapy board just done with Sharpie that I made in a hurry for an event. And then I don't think we even wound up using it. But the plan is... Sorry, my camera's all wonky. The plan is to eventually do a really nice embroidered version um, in the round so that I can run a drawstring through it and make it its own pouch. Uh, I made one for my brother for Christmas, and it turned out pretty well, so going to make myself a set now. Uh, the glass stones are just, you know, garden section or dollar store, wherever you find those sorts of things. We learned how to play last winter, and eventually, you know, we, we try and have some, some good period entertainment available when we're at events, just to try and minimize the, you know, urge to take out the cell phone and play around online. This is the very first inkle trim I ever made. It's just a scrap of it. It's not very good, and it's gone a little discolored from being thrown in with dirty junk, but oh well. I've gotten better since, I promise. <laughs> Nicer edges and all that. Which I don't think you can really see, but the uh, deck of cards and the pouch drawstring are both made out of uh, lucid cord, which is a sort of square knot type of cord, and it's really nice because you can cut it anywhere and it won't unravel. Like, I use it for basically all of my... anything that needs to get a drawstring or lacing, and it's a really nice, easy project that you can sit and have a conversation with people while you work on. You don't have to be counting stitches or, or anything like that. It's just back and forth, basically. So these are uh, pieces of costume jewelry that my mother-in-law gave to me, and the one I think I can probably use, but I'm not really sure how to make use of the one in the blue case there. So I'm setting them aside. I'm, I kind of want to. There's almost an Anglo-Saxon sort of vibe to the uh, to the first set of jewelry, and it's got, like, earrings, necklace, and bracelet. It's a full set. Um, this poor thing is falling apart. It's a trifold mirror, and I, I like having it for getting ready in the morning at events and everything. It's got a chain to hang it up f from, so it can be hung on our tent pole. Um, but it's not in great shape, and I've definitely, I've seen ones in better shape at antique stores since, and I may have to replace it. When I opened this box up, I had forgotten what I'd packed into it. Um, those same neighbors who did French fur trade, uh, they gave us this decanter set, 
and it is hand-blown glass, and I haven't had a chance to use it at an event yet because I don't think we've actually gone to a camping event since they gave it to us. We do our own mead, and my mom does wine, and so like there's no shortage of things to put into this set. We just haven't had the opportunity yet. Yeah, hand-blown glass, and it's got the pretty brass fittings around the cups and stuff. There's, I think, six cups with the set, and they're all packed, packed into that tiny little box. I think our next event that we're going to is late September, so hopefully we can take some of this stuff with us and make ourselves a nice little day camp. We might we might wind up camping at that one overnight as well. I'm not positive, but at the very least, we're going to set up a day camp. We've got, uh, it's one of the projects we want to do for this coming year is I want to make proper walls for our sunshade because right now it's just a roof and we have like an ugly blue tarp, but who wants to look at that? So I'm going to try and find some, maybe, what do they call it? Uh, exterior decor type fabrics from Joann's or something and maybe try my hand at some stamping because I haven't done that yet in block print stamping. Um, these books could probably go back on my bookshelf, but they're going to stay in the box for now. Um, basically, it's just a, a handful of books that are all set in the medieval period, in the SCA time period. I mean, obviously King Arthur, right? But uh, a couple of others, and some of them I haven't read yet. I watched the uh, Pillars of the Earth series when it was still on Netflix years ago now, and really enjoyed it, but have not sat down to read the book yet, so they go in the the stuff box, so maybe I'll actually get a chance to sit down and read at one of the events one of these days. Normally, I wind up going to a lot of camp, or not camping, <laughs> wind up going to a lot of the classes or hanging out in the a &S areas, just admiring everybody's handiwork, so I don't wind up reading as much as I always intend to. I have such good intentions, and I never follow through. I feel like I have more books set in the medi medieval period, but really I just have a bunch of reference books. I will probably at some point do a video on on the on the book collection because it's a little bit ridiculous, and I love it. I might also do one on all of my like historical costuming references. Those span outside of SCA period. So yeah, that's basically all there was to it. Um, I realized after I had finished filming that I'd forgotten to put the straw hats into the box in any way, shape, or form. I'm okay with that because I don't want to crush them in a box anyway if I can help it. Although it does present a bit of a storage issue because my cat will chew on them if I leave them where he can reach them. So we'll find out. Uh, we'll find a place for them, I guess. I didn't get rid of as much as I wanted to. The candlesticks, the plastic drinking horn, that's pretty much it. Maybe some of the costume jewelry. And I did clear a couple of things out of that box that shouldn't have been in that box. There was a surcoat, there was a, a hood. So those will go in with the rest of the garb where they're supposed to. The surcoat I might actually get rid of. It's from, oh, 11 years ago. 11 years ago, and it is made out of a synthetic fabric, and I won't personally wear it with my garb anymore, but like somebody who's less picky might want it, so I'm going to probably put it into my, my loner stash, or donate it to a friend, or something. Um, yeah, I'm not sure yet. It won't be in with my garb, but I might hang on to it for other people. Sorry, my AC keeps kicking on because it is like 80 degrees outside, and it causes a little bit of hiss, but oh well. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I think our next big project is going to be the, the kitchen stuff. Uh, we want to make sort of like an A-frame tripod sort of deal for over our fire pit. Um, we've got just like a little freestanding fire pit so we don't have to dig up dirt wherever we go. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to pack, but so would a shovel be, so what can you do? Uh, I think that's all for now, so 
I guess. I will probably see you guys next time with a whole heap of medieval reference books. I will share my reference library. Yeah, have a good one.